fled. Well, you probably heard quite a healthy round of applause ringing out here at centre court. Everyone that's anyone that's accredited, they are here. Maybe even a few that are not. the placement of the towels due to those COVID protocols. The pandemic, of course, putting paid to the event happening last year. Just as well for this man. He wouldn't have been fit to play. Elbow fixed, but his eyes are fixed on Cunera. Like that ball back. He does that. He does it a lot. Talk about superstitious. He asks for the same ball a lot of times. Superstition is the way. excitement there <laughs> he's like I got it I'm gonna smash it but he's not gonna be happy with that that's the overhead very difficult coming in he even wants that ball back he's like yeah I'll take it again well if it ain't broke unlike the scoreboard they bring almost cracking one through that as you see the adrenaline high but so was the shot Wow, he is ready. He is going to come out. We're going to see this. This is, I mean, Egbrink's a big hitter with sin serves at 179. We're going to see the slice and we're going to see the energy. And Kenyatta doesn't want that ball back. <laughs> Going for every shot, it seems. Yeah. And he's going to stay pumped up. He's going to get himself energized. He has to. He's, he's got no choice. Yeah, and he's up in the face of Kanyeda straight away. He made that boxing analogy at the start. He's standing in the centre of the ring here in centre court and swinging with freedom. And the first break point opportunity goes to Egbrink. Yeah, Egbrink on the brink of a break. And aggression paying off. 
from the man from Hardenberg. And it's been hard and fast from him. A big break on the board for the man from the Netherlands. He cares not for the reputation of Kenyeda Shingo and talk about a fast start. Definitely. I mean, he's come out firing. You know, I want to go back to something you said at the beginning when you said about Shingo Kenyeda. Kenyeda has a saying on his racket. He's the one of the greatest all-time wheelchair players of all. But that shows you how humble he is and just... He doesn't take himself as yeah. he works so hard. And interestingly enough, he and Gordon Reed just had a conversation with Roger Federer about 20 minutes. And it was through a call and it was this conversation. And it was really interesting. It was like you've got Roger Federer asking Kenyatta how he does stuff. And then Kenyatta asking Federer, how do I get better on grass? I mean, it was the it was the coolest conversation just to hear the three of them go back and forth and the amount of respect. But even that, oh, just by yeah. having to tell himself, and that's how important the mental game is yeah. and the mental strategy and how much you actually work on it. Yeah, he does. He accredits a lot of his success to Anne Quinn, his mental coach, since 2005. Beautiful, just solid. This is the egg rink's gonna be hitting these big balls. He's gonna look to be really aggressive. The problem with Kenyatta is just that he's so consistent. And what it's he he'll he'll strangle his opponents and just just strangle them until they just can't breathe anymore. Kind of like a boa constrictor and that's what's going to happen he doesn't mind if he loses a few games he's going to just push Eggbrink around the court just make him work for everything if he comes up with winners so be it yeah you're absolutely right there's something of the warrior about Kenyeda that he's almost enjoying this challenge from Eggbrink as we get to enjoy this fabulous final <laughs> Well, that one just dropping slightly wide. Now, we've learned a lot from listening to you over the last Paralympic journey. But you always told me that first couple of games, they feel themselves out. What, what happened to that? Yeah, it didn't on this one. These guys have come out. They've been waiting for this. This is the yeah. last match of the wheelchair championships. And so they know how important it is. They, and they're on a high. I mean... Challenge, good challenge. You got Eggbrink with the underdog, the the underdog. He's coming out firing, and you've got Kenyatta with with the expectation. And Kenyatta never never has a slow start. Let's just get that straight. And that was just out. Kenyatta just comes out. As I said, he's he's, he's got weapons, but again, he's so consistent. So he doesn't come out with a slow start at any point. Speaking of the power and not wanting to start slowly, someone should check the net there for an extra hole. But Egrick, of course, wanted that on the other side of the net. He was broken in the first. Champions always respond.
a slice backhand. I mean, how Egbrink even got to that ball <laughs> was just amazing. I mean, he pushed, he pushed, he pushed. He had those all those pushes, but again, that slice backhand that it was just it was just on a platter, and he's like, I'm going to hit it. And there was a look there for the first time from Kanyeda as if, okay, a little bit, not resignation, but a flicker of momentary doubt. Okay, he's gonna again. He's he's a sort of player that will have some a high amount of winners and a high amount of unforced errors. And a double fault isn't in essence a unforced error. Sure. Well, it served him well. That's why he's in this final, of course. Yeah, great return though. Just just I'm taking the pace and going. I'm gonna give it you back. Well, it is befitting that we have a full house. Kanyeda Shingo breaking back. Tom Egbrink from the Netherlands. Well, he came out with a perfect game plan. Can he sustain that against this man here? And just for your background, in his preparation for Rio, he spent every day of the year training, hitting 30,000 of each shots noted down in a diary. And it's paying off. Ooh. Right play again. That's a that's a good play. He's going to have to take those chances and try to out hit Kenyatta. Slice and dice, close. And just a couple of occasions there, Egbrink getting a good look, a good opportunity to play the last shot. Millimetres long, same ball back for Cunieda. Again, that boa constrictor feeling. It's like, I'm not going to give you any free points. Just not going to. Yeah, no breathing space for Eggbrink and no wriggle room either. Despite the Dutchman playing arguably the best tennis of his career so far. These backhands across the net from Ebrick, how does he get it so low? Well, it's it's the slice, and what he what they do is they open the racket face and they keep it open as they cut underneath it and go forwards through it. So in essence, obviously the ball's moving forwards, but it has the underspin on it. So it's just really strong wrist and arm to make sure you don't cup it or you don't cut it too much. So it's going straight the way through. Uh, well, that was, uh, sorry, I thought it was an out, but it wasn't, it was a, come on. It's, you ask about that, and that's why people say they, they knife it. It's like a knife going through, so you don't cup it. Cupping is, I'm, I'm trying to show you sure. when you can't see it. We, well, you you can, can't, see but not it everyone else can. But a cup, if you imagine a cup, that makes the ball go up. So you want to slice it and knife it.
just awareness. It, it, that was a really tough ball of, for, for Kenyatta to hit. We've talked about that, of taking it on the rise, and Egbrink totally mishit that ball, but that ball on the rise is really difficult to hit. Not so much a cup as a ball that time, firing it up into the sky. Inspired stuff so far from Ebrink hanging on. Wow. You see how smooth his, you can see that he's put in, I mean, they say 10,000, sure. right? 10,000 repetitions is what gets you there. He's doing three times as much, but you can see his swing never changes. It's the same thing every time. And three times as much on every shot. That's not 30,000 total. No. That's backhand, forehand, slice, cut, all the, all the ones you've just told us. Yeah. And probably to each uh, area yeah. on the court. And it's that work ethic. Well, as they say, anything done well looks easy. Great defense from Kenyatta. He was out of it, his ball was behind him, but just able to put one more ball into play. And that one more ball gives him that marginal advantage so far. 2-1 here in the first. In an engrossing gold medal match. Kaneda Shingo of Japan, the number one seed. 2-1 to the good. Well, a very appealing moment for Kenyeda Shingo. Already in at the hydration station because they've been working so hard. And look at the composure on the face of Tong Egbrink. Inspired performance so far. Oftentimes being able to hit the last shot of the rally. But not always getting them exactly where he wants. Big occasions. For the big man from Herdenberg. Going against Kaneda Shingu, of course, from Kashina City in Chiba, which is a couple of hours south from the centre of Tokyo, which is where we are in the capital. Wow, that, that was definitely a challenge, but let's just talk about that back and the egg front. The chair skills. I mean, he hit that behind him, just I think it was more of a, oh, okay, I'm going to try it. And yeah, gets it back deep into the corner. That's the strength of his upper body. Yeah, and that's, uh, that was in. We've seen all the skills here. And that point was replayed, so it wasn't going to be a winner because he was able to get to it. So then when they, when that happens, they re do replay the point. It's 
struggling with that overhead. That's the third missed overhead. Really good skills getting backwards there. He's just got to think about, okay, pushing it back up instead of trying to snap over it and trying to get some a good angle. He just needs to think, I'm going to put it in. Well, that time, just drifting wide, the oh-so-precise, that cutting backhand that you mentioned. Well, the knife a little bit blunt on that occasion. 15.30. And the fist pump already from Cuneda. Unforced errors, 10 in total. The lion's share of them on this side of the net. This time it's the turn of Cuneda to put the spin on the ball and put Egbrink in a spin here. A couple of breakpoint opportunities. That's the pressure, that's the boa constrictor pressure of just not being able to get too many balls past Kenyatta. And for that reason, in the gold medal match, it's Kenyatta Shingo with a 3-1 lead over the Netherlands' Tom Egbrink. And bringing that pressure by his very presence. Super fast start from this man here. But champions always respond. And of course we've seen and we've talked about techniques and timings. Let's have a little listen to the sport. You can hear the wheels churning. You can hear the shouts from the players. Looks up to his delegation and his team trying to ask, should I challenge him? <laughs> That is not going to be good enough if he wants to take this title away from Kanyeda. But again, that's the that's the tough. He sees he sees Egbrink out and he comes in and forces when Paelis come in like that, it forces the person that's returning against it to do something. And if they don't, that's what happens. And all of a sudden, in double quick speed, conceded the first game. I was going to say he hasn't looked back since. He's looked back plenty to get the ball in. A 4-1 lead, commanding here in this gold medal match. Well, we are, of course, here at the Paralympic Games, but in terms of the tail of the tape, as he gets some vitamins on board, 
45 grand slams to his name. Incredible and still going strong. Yeah, and you going against Egbrink, who made his Grand Slam singles debut at Wimbledon this year as a wild card. So what happens in the Grand Slams is that it's all based on your ITF world ranking, but they only take this, it's only an eight draw. So they only take the top seven in each category. And then the eighth person is a wild card. So usually if there's somebody within the range of a good ranking, they're not going to put somebody out there that, you know, is going to just get crushed but they'll give it to the local person but this year they gave it to Egbrink who was number eight so what happens is that you know this this guy's got so many weapons but he doesn't it, he needs to get into those grand slams so he needs one of those players to either retire or not be eligible to play so that he gets into those grand slams and once you're into those grand slams you're kind of golden does the Paralympic classification, a medal, does that affect the rankings at all? If they will. There's points to it. There are, there are points to this tournament. Um, it's just not as much as a Grand Slam would be. And you've mentioned it a couple of times of somebody getting in, and the tour is one of the most professionalized tours in adaptive sports. And with the Grand Slams and the total tour from the lower ranks all the way up, it's a good sport to get into. <laughs> But it's a good shot to get on to from Egbrink. No messing about with this man. Brink knows that he has to do a little bit more with the serve than against any, a lot of other people just because Kenyatta is pushing forwards and is looking to attack the return of serve. Tried to go for the cute angle there. But the angle was just too acute to land. As Kenyatta lands another big blow to the efforts in this set. It's actually not a great shot from Kenyatta. That was the one that cut a little bit, didn't cut through the air, but cupped a little bit, the slice, and it just threw Egbrink off. And in the throws, it gives this man a couple more break point chances. And he takes it. A commanding 5-1 lead for the main man from Japan in this gold medal match. It's Kunida Shingo, the number one seed. 5-1 to the good and work to be done for the Netherlands' Tom Egbrink. You see his mental strength even in that, that game. It was he's he's in a commanding lead. He's just got to get. He's just getting balls in. He's just get. He's gotten used to Eggbrink's power, and I don't think he he feels under that much pressure. But after those points, even when he was four one thirty love, he's just so focused and come on, and clenching his fist. Yeah, can you do clenching his fist? Egbrink shaking his head, a miss hit at a crucial point. They're all crucial against this man. And more signs of adrenaline landing long. How much longer will this set last?
again, just a beautiful backhand, solid technique, stays down with it, moving in to put Egbrink under pressure. And that gives him three set points. that boa constrictor not letting Egbrink get away with anything hits a great shot but he's going to put that one more ball in the court and that gives him the easy first set 6-1 superb stuff from Kiyera Shingo the number one for a reason well he came out firing did Egbrink but firing back Kiyera Shingo 6-1 in the first Taking a look at those set one stats in the third row from the bottom on the right side, 13 unforced errors from Egbrink as opposed to four from Kanyeda. And that's really the story. And it's not like Egbrink's missing too many easy balls. It's yeah. just a constant pressure from Kanyeda. Now, as you rightly say, Egbrink very much in the conversation as we see some of the main shots. One of the things that was most arresting on the way out was Kanyeda Shingo's steely glare. He looked focused and ready, but what a response from Egbrink. But there's an old phrase, you don't poke the bear, because it'll come back and bite you. And there's a face if you ever needed to see one of a champion. Again, seeing so many of Kanyeda's backhands and the technique and the stability he has as well. He's so, it, it's not a tightness, but yeah. it's just a consistency with his body. And he's so still when he hits. He keeps his body very, very still, which helps with the consistency. Yep, still in mind and still in body. But is this man still in contention? He's going to serve here in the second set. Well, he tried to be aggressive in the first, and he was in it. You've all seen it. He's got new balls. He's got a new challenge. Not the way Egbrink wants to start the second set. We've talked a lot about strategy, and you've asked what what these people need to, what these players need to do, and I'll tell you in a second. that and be like okay it's like what does he do at this point that was an amazing drop shot had spec spin on it it died and he was just able to get there and how he controlled himself i was gonna say because if you touch the net yeah so when he got there you see he swore he turned and just went sideways along the net ball has to bounce twice and oh three times and then he can go into the net because the point's over But is this service game slipping away from Egbrink? Three break points. And from the ferocious start, he's been subdued by the quality of this man.
Wow. I mean, Kenyatta's playing. You, you said it, though. He's playing amazing. When he came out, he just had this look, and it was, it was in his eyes. And he is just... I mean, his stats are amazing. He's only got four unforced errors, and he's playing against someone who's hitting the ball so heavy, but he's just counter-punching. And Egbren, there's not a lot he's going to be able to do. Yeah. I mean, it, can he change his strategy? Possibly. Will he? Possibly. But, I mean, he's not... I don't think he's going to out-rally and be more consistent than what Kenyatta is. So he's got to stay aggressive, but, it, again, staying aggressive, you're playing against the... the best player in the history of wheelchair tennis that's playing his best right now, which is scary. Yep, and scary is the word. It's fright night here in Tokyo, and it is frightening the levels that this man can go to. And of course, as we see, Kenyeda, well, the dream of Egbrink was just to be at the Paralympics. He watched it in 2008 in Beijing, dreamed of being here, and here he is in the final. But it's the dream crusher at this end. How did he manage that? Well, again, he's going to get upset with that one. See, so, yeah, he wants that one back. He just, his, his chess skills, you know, those 30,000, he's probably practiced all those too, <laughs> seriously. Practice every trick shot, every, every movement. And again, that's just the boa constrictor feeling of, oh my gosh, I've got to hit this ball that's just amazing. Otherwise, it's going to get pushed down. Same again. It's, he had the open court that time, but again, just going for too much. And Kenyan is not even happy with that volley. It's like, I just hit that a little too hard. The champions never satisfied unless for a few seconds on the podium. And at the moment, the Dutchman heading for silver. Heading there pretty rapidly. Not a procession by any means. Egbrink has contributed massively so far, but the writing on the wall already. Well, all's fair and love and tennis. Tom Egbrink saying, yeah, OK. He, he didn't want to miss that fourth one. <laughs> and I was, I was actually going to say, watch out, Kenyatta, because it was coming. Still some venom left in Egbrink. Yep, lands long and lands another powerful shot to the ambitions of Egbrink. And it's the power of this man here. The gold medal match, Kenyatta Shingo, the number one seed, comprehensive 6-1 in the first and two love here in the second. Seeing Kenyatta on his serve and two tosses that he chose not to hit. And that's a... It, you, you, 
this is the only shot in tennis that you actually don't have to hit. So he let those go because he didn't like it. But it's the only shot. I mean, it'd be great if at some point you could be like, actually, stop. I didn't Pause. like that. Let's let's redo that one. But in tennis, that is the only shot. It's your choice whether you hit it or not. Fantastic. Perfect. Perfect. Just just perfection. No, Well, a big shot from the big man. Egbrink may be on the brink. But he's still in there fighting. Wheelchair tennis. How do you like it? A big shot and a big response from Egbrink. Creeping ahead in terms of the winners. And he's certainly done himself great credit so far. We're not writing him off by any means. That's the job of Kanyeda. We'd love a hold of serve. Great hold, great hold for Egg Brink and a very important hold to get on the board in the second set. We have Shingo 6 1 and up 2 1 in the second set. So the critical stage is now for this man, Tom Egbrink from Hardenberg in the Netherlands. His third Paralympic Games, couple of quarterfinals in doubles. Up against this man here, looking at the diary with whatever mantra he's got written on it. And in terms of an exhibition in composure and quality, Shingo Kinyeda.
no unforced errors from Kenyeda in the second set. That's incredible. And only four overall. Look again at the consistency, seeing his first serve percentage is 83%. And only 57 for Egbrink. Look at the spin on that one. What a response. Kenyeda got the first one back. But not the second. Cuts across it. Kenyeda left chasing across court. Brinks fighting. He's in there. He, he's got a slight opening here to break back and get it back on serve in the second set. His guys from Kenyeda looked one way, played it the other. 15, 15. And as you rightly said, doesn't want to give Egbrink any sort of encouragement. That's his own job, and he's doing it. That's a great run around forehand from Kenyeda. And it's, it's loving the way Kenyeda is moving forward. As soon as he sees Egbring out of position, he's looking to sneak in to pick off an easy volley. about the first ball that we've seen from Kenyatta that he actually didn't move up to it. And his first unforced error. Just not good enough. Again, just deep, deep corner. See the, the fight there, just even a little bit of frustration that this game's going to do, so he made an unforced error. Good 
good hold from Kenyatta. One unforced error in that in that game, and he's not happy with it, but he's happy with the 3-1 lead in the second set. So here we go, the critical stages. 3-1 to the good. And he has been very good indeed. Tom Egbrink on serve. Nice little behind the back pass there to the ball kid. Well, the adrenaline obvious from the Dutchman. A shake of the head as well. I don't know if he's shouting ice or nice, but he's certainly ice cool with that one. Oh, Yet again, Cunheda making a dent in the serve of the Dutchman. Time to throw in the double fault for the triple breakpoint opportunity. Big serve from Eggbrink, one sixty seven. Kanyeda is still with two breakpoint opportunities for a 4-1 lead in the second set. One more break point opportunity. Kenyatta is going to be frustrated with himself. He missed that again. Nice. Just Kenyatta committed to go one way, and I'm not sure Eckbrink really saw that, but just decided to go there, and Kenyatta was going the other way. Yep, good instincts. First juice pulls back three break points. And pulls back the big hammer on the first serve. Nice forehand, there's that dynamic Dutchman showing us what he can do with his forehands. expectation throwing this one up here I've seen the best 
But that one doesn't fall into that category for Egbrink. Worth a throw yes. is his challenge, after all. Or more accurately, it was his challenge. But the big challenge again from the big man. Can he get out of his service game here? Grueling rally. Egbrink trying to change his strategy somewhat, mm. just trying to throw the ball up in the air, trying to get Kenyatta out of his rhythm. And you see Kenyatta's mental strength there of, come on, I got it. What a time to produce a big ace. We saw there 24 unforced errors from this man, forcing himself to dig deep. Can he force himself onto the scoreboard again here? Kenyatta drills it. Cross court down the line. Perfection again. And big shout as well. Well, he would like that one back with Egbrink. Was so close to holding his serve. Just signs of losing his nerve. Breakpoint chance. And in the longest rally so far in this set. Beautiful, beautiful rally. See Egbrink trying to stay in and just not able to keep up with the pace of Kenyatta and say pace, the pace of the rally, the consistency, the speed work of the chair.
to be at the Paralympic Games when he first saw wheelchair tennis back in 2008. But this man has dedicated his life to the sport. And just a few more rolls down the road from the main man from Japan, Kinedo Shingo, in a commanding position as he tries to seal Paralympic history, looking for three Paralympic golds in the wheelchair tennis. Well, the net is three feet high and he has three opportunities to try and get the gold. Well, he'd like that one back. Sat up nicely. Signs of humanity there. But certainly not fragility. Big roar from Big Tom. As clean as you like. Ten total winners in this second set. Pushing towards breakpoint territory. Brink trying to go for that. He looks up, he apologizes. <laughs> Not sure what he's apologizing for, just being amazing in this match. <laughs> and there it is. Is what a beautiful volley again, just pulling Egbring out in that easy volley to the co open court. And guess what? He wants that ball back. <laughs> There's a slight opening for Egbring, and Kenyatta said, Nope, not happening. And a great swinging volley from Kenyeda. Just taking his time getting up there. And that swinging inside out forehand volley gives him a 5 1 lead in the second set. One game away from the gold medal. One game away indeed. He's the history man. Tom Egbrink are his Paralympic dreams history, or can he fight back? Well, Egbrink tried with that cutting backhand. 
but firing back Cuneda. History edging closer. Beautiful stuff, although well, we've seen plenty of power. But the precision there, the soft touch. And he's been no soft touch in this final. The scoreboard belying the efforts of this man. He's dragged Cuneda deep into this. Well, from the finesse of the little drop shot to the ferocity on the serve. You said he had dynamite in his hands, the Dutchman. Is it accurate? In it goes. Egg fighting to the last possible minute. We thought that ball was out. I can't believe it actually dropped in, but again, Kenyatta coming up with a beautiful, easy volley. Well, easy volley, maybe, but hard times now for the man from Hardenberg. Well, he drives it wide. Just when it looked as if he was going to be able to hold his serve. Look who came knocking. And that gives Kenyatta his first match point, not just a match point, championship point, not just championship point, gold medal point. Lands wide. Had the whole court to look at. Is he human after all? <laughs> Very human. But it's been fantastic from both. Eggbrink was on the brink. The huge roar as Egbrink comes roaring back into this. Can he get out of his service game? 
Well, there's never much justice in elite sport, but somewhere, can he dig it out? Wow, and what a comeback in that game, saving two championship points for Egbrink. And Egbrink is still in, and he's going to make Kenyatta serve for that gold medal. Well, in the men's singles gold medal match, Kenyatta Shingo took the first set 6-1. Looked as if he was going to do the same in the second. But Tom Egbrink of the Netherlands fighting back as we go the distance in this one. A few more drinks of water, a few more deep breaths. more nods of the head from the current defending double champ. Well, he's been as cool as the ice in that bag. One last bit of energy gel. But it's the energy on this side of the net that he's got to worry about because Tom Egbrink has battled. So here we go. First set in favour of the host and home favourite, Kenyeda Shingo. And he's serving to win his third Paralympic Games. Well, the soft touch at the net. Wow. Again, you just saw him come in and it dropped pretty quick. He's just able to just, just the right amount of touch and there's that ball again. He wants it. Well, the spectators gathered here have been given a treat so far. Top class wheelchair tennis in Tokyo. Can he be the top man again? And that gives Kenyatta match point, championship point, gold ball point, number three in this match. And he wants that ball for the fourth time in this game.
And what a fighter he is. On the brink is Egg Brink. But just as he's done for the entire final, he keeps on fighting. However, the Paralympic Championship points remain. And it lands wide again. Right here, right now, Eggbrink. He will not give up, he will not go away. And it's befitting of a fantastic final. That the fans are gathered, wherever you're watching from. And you didn't know what wheelchair tennis was, this is what it's all about. It's triple triumph in Tokyo for Kenyatta. Three times a champion, always a legend. See the emotion, he got it. It took five times to get it. But we have the third time Paralympic champion. See the emotion. The joy from both of them, the appreciation and the disbelief. He's, oh, he's getting into it now. He's like, come on, give it to me, give it to me. He's been so stoic and now just elation and joy and disbelief. Seeing the He's gonna go get the flag that's so deserved. Celebrating with his team the years and the years. Well, we mentioned those 30,000 shots. It was with that man there, Hiromichi Maruyama, handing over the flag. And as you said, five championship points, five years they had to wait. You think it was worth the training and repetitions now? Hard work pays off. And the legend takes the acclaim. Well, as we see Kenyeda Shingo, we see what Paralympic sport is all about. He held it together for so long but it's tears of joy now. The top man in Tokyo can barely contain the joy. Kenyatta Shingo 